The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFN. And just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time, we got about 30 minutes to go until the start of trading. And you have markets slightly in the red this morning. Quite the day of volatility yesterday, surging to take out actually Wednesday's highs, up as high as 38.20. We climb overnight, basically chopping around near the highs that we had about 4 p.m. Eastern Time until about 2 a.m. Eastern Time. Markets at about 38.20, you sell off. And you're talking about a sell off, man. Volatility nowhere near out of this market yet, folks. You're talking about almost 55 S&P points. Uh, you go from 38.20 down to an overnight low at just six in the morning of 37.63. Since then, you see the volatility almost making it back to 3,800, but all the markets slightly in the red, still well off the lows that we had not that long ago, folks. You're talking about a few days ago. The lows, 10.3. Yeah, is that Monday? I believe it is, right? That's Monday, man. We were there lower pre-market, 35.71. So you're still talking about trading 210 S&P points above there. It's only Thursday morning, folks. We got two full trading days ahead of us. We got non-farm payrolls coming up tomorrow. That'll be a big one at 8.30 in the morning. Right now, NASDAQ 100, you're slightly in the red right now, 11,595. And keep your eye on, okay, the 382, these markets, all they're doing right now is just chopping around. These are daily charts. You accelerate from almost 4,200. That's when we got the CPI print. For August, on September 13th, 4,200, down to 3,571. All you've done is bounce a 382 of the move that we've been in, folks, uh, for the better part of just basically three weeks or so. NASDAQ 100, pretty similar action. Now, which one are we dealing with here? Let's take this one off real quick. Nope, that was probably not the right one to take off. But you can see when you take from, nope, that's not. This is September 13th. There's your sell-off. On a Fibonacci basis, the NASDAQ 100. Also, right at the 382 in terms of the bounce we're getting here. So, yeah, they're pretty big bounces, but in the context of the move we've had, you're only talking about a 382. The Dow, let's take that one off, zoom in on the action from September 13th. And this could be, you know, basically is an A to B, C to D on all these indices, right? Dow, A point just above 34,000 to 31. You trade up to 32.5, you trade down to 28.5. And let's just see where we are on a Fibonacci basis on the Dow as well. Yeah, just above the 382, all of them chopping around. Dow just holding above 30,000 right now. We jumped to Bitcoin, 20,190. Now, Bitcoin, you back it up to when this thing started trading for the first time on futures, December 2017, almost five years ago. And where are we? Right where we started five years ago with some volatility in between, down to 3,000, up to almost 70, and right back to where futures began in December 2017. Keep your eye on that price point because 20,000 is an important one considering that's where it was five years ago when it started trading on a regulated exchange. OPEC, crude oil, quite the week to the upside. This morning, holding on to relative highs. We're backing off a bit in the last few minutes from 88 to 87.38. But as you can see, pretty much right where we were since we accelerated higher at about 11 a.m. Eastern time. Gold contract up to 17.38. We're down to 17.20. And we jumped to notes and bonds. Quite the pullback from 113.30 on Tuesday. We're at 112.12, right near the lows of yesterday. Zooming in on the action, we make a low. Yeah, about 112.08. We were chopping around there overnight on the 10-year and we jump over to the volatility index this morning vix trading just at about 29 for the vix all right jumping around to some of the currencies gotta check out the currencies man with the actions we've been getting dollar rising a bit towards the highs we had yesterday before a little bit of a pullback you take a look at the dollar folks uh I'd keep your eye on those channel lines until you really get a decisive break. And at some point, you will get a decisive break, man. Uh, we're going to get some important numbers tomorrow for non-farm payroll numbers. We are in the environment. We were talking to our man Kevin Hicks yesterday. We'll talk to him coming up after the first break in a few minutes. Uh, bad news is good news. Good news is bad news because the Fed, how far can they go in this economy? How far do they need to go? We're going to get some important numbers tomorrow. All you have is the dollar index just pulling back to not even the bottom line of this channel line. It's been in quite a pullback from 115 to 110. 
But if we're still in that upward channel and you're still seeing dollar strength in a big way, maybe you're seeing dollar strength because we have higher yields coming at us from the Fed. Very possible. Uh, very possible. It's not over quite yet in terms of the run and the trends we're having right now. Dollar, euro, euro, U.S. dollar. Talk about trend lines. I mean, that would be a nice sell in my book, folks. You set your stop somewhere above that. Maybe you look for above parity to some degree. But you look at this channel line, and they've been intact for the better part of eight, nine months now. And you talk about if we start pushing the bottom line of just the ch ch channel line, excuse me, there's your 92, there's your 93. No reason to think it's out of the realm with where we are right now, folks. Uh, we jump over the pound, which has its own issues going on. And yeah, they uh, they got back within the channel line. So that was going to be a key test. You accelerate lower on the tax news, actually get back within that channel line, still within a channel to the downward trend. But if that catches a bid to the top side, you could be looking for the pound to about 118. And let's jump around to the dollar yen. Yen, uh, just pushing. Talked to our man Teddy Kegstat yesterday. Check out the Tiger Forex report, folks. Look at this thing. Just pushing this 145 limit, man, since... Uh, the volatility coming from 146 almost down to a low of 141 and right now we're at 144.7 uh teddy was looking for a, a weaker yen over there man and yeah tough to deny that this thing is just pushing no matter what they try and do over there to get in the way of that freight train and as long as the dollar is moving like that folks very tough to change that trend all right s and right now negative by 11 let's jump around to some of the stories we got and peloton so they're cutting they're cutting 500 more jobs. We take a look at the short-term time frame. There's your volatility this morning, down to 8, up to 894, 853. I'd be real careful, folks, on this one because uh, there is no reason why they're any different from any other exercise equipment maker. And we know if you watch any type of television or promotional material, there's always a fad in exercise, whether it's the Bowflex, right, was the Nordic Track, and they're all around. Nordic Track, they stay, they were able to survive, and now they have many different products. But far from the case. And there's probably better companies out there, even at Peloton from 850. And jumping over, there's the news. So they cut 500 more jobs in an effort to save the company. Bulk of our restructuring work is complete. Uh, slashed thousands of job this, jobs this year. It has about 3,800 employees. Okay, uh, They slashed it by 500, which is 12%. So a decent number, 12% of the workforce, leaving it with just under 4,000 employees. Uh, yeah, along with reductions in operating expenses, and they're trying to reach break-even point on cash flow by the end of next year. That's a long way, and that's what they're hopeful for. Okay, so you want to know when this company might turn around? Try and get into it three to six months ahead of time, maybe when they go cash flow positive. Because right now, that's pretty far out for a company like this, and they have been stemming cash to an absurd degree when they come out with their numbers. Yeah, laying off almost 3,000 in February. They were going to make all their own bikes. Now they're going to sub that out, which is probably a smart move overall. Um, yeah. Boy, Credit Suisse, right? Got a couple articles we could talk about with them, man. You could probably do a whole show. Uh, they're eyeing some outside money on investment bank spinoff. But the one thing you do have is you got JP Morgan saying they're worth at least $15 billion and undervalued. Be careful what you hear out there, folks, because you never hear it until it's the end and everybody's out of business. Um, but look at that stock. That's not a tough chart. What is, man? Right now, they're valued at 11.4, so they're saying 15 billion. There's upside there if it goes up, but man, that chart, scary stuff. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back with our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Network. We'll be right back after the break. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S and P's negative by 11 points right now. You're looking at Dow futures negative by 94. You have the Nasdaq 100 negative by 28. That's just about a quarter percent. Let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, at 12 noon Eastern time. Fast market from the TD Ameritrade Network right here on Tiger TV. Your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. They break down the day's market action, folks. They walk you through what's going on in the market. They got some great guests. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups. If you want to learn more about options, defined risk, even if you're not trading trading them, understanding how they work, the volatility, the premium, how it's priced in. It's an education every hour, folks. Check it out. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. That's right. It's all about the strategies that we teach on Fast Market. We cover individual names and we look at potential paper money trades in those names, but it's really the strategies that we hope to teach people. So they have that menu when they think of a range bound uh, look in a stock or a big move, both up or down. That's what we've been talking about all week. It's the strategies, Tommy, giving our viewers that menu of choices to make. Kevin, I've learned so much from your show over the years, man. I appreciate it. I tell my friends about it. And, folks, I know they're an advertiser. I always say I know I'm biased. Uh, but I would be telling it to people anyway, man, because the education you guys put out, Kevin, and, and you know it, man. And we're digressing a bit. We'll get into the market. But years ago, man, I tell people these options courses in particular, it was so difficult to understand how they work, how everything is related, what you guys talk about, um, data. Delta, all of that stuff, so much, you know, thousands of dollars, folks, and you get that education every single day, man, right here at 12 o'clock with Kevin and Tom. And with that, Kevin, we got quite a main event tomorrow morning with the jobs number. We got initial claims up a little bit today. That helped the market a little bit. I'm hearing a lot, whether I'm talking about uh, analysts out there, bad news might be good news. You talked about it yesterday. So are we looking for some bad news tomorrow from non-farm payrolls from September? Well, it's counterintuitive, isn't it? To, to If you want stocks to go higher, you need the economic data to come in soft or less powerful. 
than it has been in the past. So you got you know three economic data points so far in the labor market this week. Jolt's data that came in weaker than expected. Stocks like that. That fueled Tuesday's rally. Then yesterday, we got the ADP employment report. That's private payrolls. Came in slightly higher than expected. Market really didn't like that so much. But that 208000 the expectations for private payrolls tomorrow are 280000 So the consensus for payrolls, 250,000 jobs at 3.7% unemployment rate, Tommy. In terms of wages, the inflation data that we get in this in this report, 0.3 on the month over month and 5.1% in the year over year. So those numbers and the expectations built in those numbers are what will fuel uh, trading tomorrow. Could they be more relief? Yes, there could be. But if this market comes in strong, that implies that the Fed will have to stay on task and keep the pressure on in terms of interest rates. I mean, with all the data, with all the moves that the Fed has done, we need some of that. those higher interest rates start hitting the overall economy, Tommy. That's what the market's looking for. And, folks, that's why you got to watch Fast Market, because, Kevin, that was an action-packed few minutes of information, man. I appreciate all that <laughs> stuff. And, boy, it's going to happen tomorrow at 830. Uh, talking about yields, right, which obviously come into the equation tomorrow. What do you think of the general volatility right now going on almost across the board, man? I pull up the 10-year, right, the 30-year, my goodness. Uh, what do you just think of that? Because that, to me, points to a very, not unstable market, but boy, you talk about a volatile equity market when you have yields. They're so volatile right now in terms of the price action, uh, the move down from August from 122 to 110, and then even the bounce you get from 110.19 to almost 114 over the period of, what, three, four, five days. Yeah, Tommy, there was a time when me and your father were younger when we wore younger clothes, when our pants had pleats, had pleats in them, <laughs> that uh, you know you used to go to the bond market to escape volatility. Now bonds and notes have become some of the more volatile trades out there. So yeah, they're, they're moving all over the board. Interest rates have come become such in focus right now, and the U.S. dollar currencies. You know, those are what are driving the market right now. I tell, I've said this before on your show, Tommy, three things. Watch the dollar, watch yields, and watch crude oil. Those three things are driving this market. Now, OPEC Plus didn't do any favors to the U.S. economy, what they did yesterday. So in terms of the supply side of the ledger, but you still got the U.S. dollar and you still got yields. And those are what are driving this market right now, Tommy, both good and bad. And the moves, I was jumping through charts on the Thinkorswim platform as you were talking, man, whether it was on a just the past 12 months, whether I was pulling up a three-year chart, a five-year, yields, crude, uh, the dollar index, all of them, just mammoth moves in those markets, obviously impacting our markets. With that in mind, Kevin, I know we got a lot to talk about today with tomorrow's main event, but what are you guys talking about coming up on Fast Market at 12 today? We'll cover Peloton. We'll cover Pinterest. And, and like I said, Tommy, this is when we do things. We try to stay with the names that are out there in the news. So I'm sure we'll look at social media. We haven't decided the final names yet, but social media will be in focus today with the Goldman Sachs upgrading Pinterest. So a lot of good choices when as we're in this time between earnings season. Boy, and those are a couple charts, man, as well. Peloton, we all know the story there. I think 171.09 down to 849. They're in the news uh, this morning. And even Pinterest, man, which I bought some stuff off of Pinterest, even uh, up to 90 bucks, 24. Uh, but getting a lift this morning, pushing almost 26 in the pre-market. Kevin, we appreciate you taking the time as always, man. We appreciate the education every day on Fast Market. We don't talk to you tomorrow. And like, as I love saying, man, because we get so much news recently, we're going to know a lot more when I talk to you on Tuesday than we do right now, I think, about this market and when we get that number tomorrow, man. We look forward to the show at 12, Kevin. Have a great weekend, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great weekend. Always a pleasure. Folks, check it out. I have learned so much from their program, the way they walk you through. The best way to learn, folks, is by doing something, okay? So that's when they set up those trades, you're able to see this is their market bias. This is their perception of what they think is going to happen in the market. This is how you might be able to profit in the best way possible with your market perception of what you think is going to happen, right? They're not going to be able to teach you 
the market opinions of whether things are going to go up or down, but many of us have those perceptions, right? And then just figuring out the best way to profit from them using options, whether you're buying volatility, you're selling volatility, what's your duration, uh, all of that outstanding show. And, and with volatility, the way it's moving right now, man, uh, that is a time when options, one way or another, we zoom in on the VIX, right? Quite a little pullback, man. We got a spike. I got to get the number up here on the chart. 34.88 seems to fit in line with some of the prior spikes we've had on the VIX. This is just going back to January 1st. We hit almost 39, almost 38, almost 37, 35, and then 35 again. Uh, we've trailed off a bit. And you see, once we've gotten those peaks prior, and we had a nice peak there for six days, a pretty sustained peak. You see when we've had them before, they've been a little bit longer. They've been a little bit less, uh, but maybe we trail off. And uh, not sure that that's going to be accurate in terms of reflecting where the Fed goes. But we get more data tomorrow. The market will react and we'll see where we go. That jobs number was a big one. Cannot deny missing by a million jobs on the jolts openings because that's what's going to matter, unfortunately, folks. It's all about jobs. You know, the economy, jobs, right? What's the Fed mandate? Full employment, jobs, not stock market, jobs, full employment and price stability. We have full employment. Kevin talked about those numbers. A great wrap up of what's expected tomorrow 3.7 percent that's full employment folks so keep your eye on cpi those wages tomorrow stay tuned we'll be right back for the open in a time of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You're looking at an S&P negative by about 15 points, trailing off a bit. NASDAQ 100 negative by 31. We got the Dow off 150 right now, jumping around to some of the commodities. Crude holding pretty steady near 88 bucks. We're at 87.66. Yeah, as Kevin put it, man, you keep your eye. Dollar index, yields, and crude, okay? Dollar index, yields, probably a little helpful. We've had a little bit of a pullback. Uh, but crude, keep your eye on it, man, because that could be a thorn in the side of inflation if we start to get a rise. And I would argue, folks, that crude sitting right now we were almost a year ago, considering what's going on during that time, considering Russia and what's going on there. If you last October, OK, said this is what I think is going to happen on a geopolitical scale with Russia, with Ukraine, with energy, with energy prices. Um, do you think crude's going to be higher or lower in a year? I said, ah, it'll probably be the same, like 85 bucks. You know, why not, right? I say, man, that's a lot of risk. What happens? What, what about uh, everything going on? You get the point, right? 85 bucks, a lot of risk. We've spent a lot of time over that number. Very hard pressed to see it pulling back. Guess what? Guess what? The X factor, we'll call it, is there, though. You get a real recession. You get China pushing the limits with zero COVID policy, shutting around cities with 20 million people. Yeah, that'll put a uh, weakening in the demand of crude and these markets catching a little bit of a bid on the open. Let's jump back and put it on a five minute. And there's your pop at 930 up to almost 3790. And yeah, I would be skeptical, folks, of any bounces in this market, man, until we really get a shift in the data. Because for some reason, uh, people keep betting on and this is this is uh, let's let's talk a little Fed since we get a big data point tomorrow. Uh Fed's Bostic and Daily Double Team fails to quash 2023 rate caught bets, right? Now, the Fed has been pretty strong, I think, saying that they will hold this for long if they have to. Folks, it's October 6th. 2023 is going to be here before you know it. Do you think inflation is going to be considerably lower to the 3 or 4% mark in any time soon? That's really tough for me to get a hold of, man, um, with where we are, right, where rents are. Remember, rents. OK, I think rents are almost one third of inflation. I think they're one of 40 percent of the core inflation number rents. What's going on with mortgage prices? Those could decrease. But houses are never going back on the market. Rents are going to be a persistent problem that are going to lag for CPI numbers for a year or two. And they have a dramatic impact. So those CPI numbers are going to be pushing heavy numbers. Now, you're going to see the. Fed and other analysts out there argue exactly what I'm saying. It's a delayed reaction, right? It's going to say that those will come down as the market catches up and that inflation will be tame if that is the driving force. But all it's going to be doing is explaining away high inflationary prints. And I'm not sure the Fed's going to be willing to start cutting in 2023 while explaining that the influences upon inflation numbers are going to go away soon because they're lagging. That sounds like almost a transitory argument, right? Getting the high prints, getting the prints on CPI, on core CPI, and that's not even talking about crude, man. What if crude starts spiking at the same time? The rent persists, right? Rate cuts anywhere in 2023 is tough. Anywhere close to, I mean, look at, so let's get to the i think i made my point euro dollar futures showed reduced expectations wednesday for a fed interest rate cuts in 2023 but still price in around one quarter point move and at least two more in 2024 so they're still pricing in a cut of one cut one quarter point in 2023 but then two more in 2024 what's going on with the economy if we have that type of cutting that would be very worrisome folks OK, because it's very difficult for me to imagine inflation crashing down the jolts number. That's a big one. Pay attention to those jobs numbers. Uh, pay attention to the unemployment rate tomorrow. If we somehow have a big miss on the jobs front, the market will love that as crazy as it is, because it's a far cry to see how these inflation numbers tame. If we start seeing jobs numbers miss to a dramatic fashion and unemployment rising, that might do it, man. Um, not sure that's going to be good for the economy, but on the long haul, got to have price stability, man. Everything else is almost worthless if you got no price stability, man. What is the point of investing? What is the point of saving, right, if you have no price stability? It's core to everything we do. I think Chairman Powell knows he blew, um, they blew it and they were late to the party. And that's why the market seems to keep getting ahead of itself, right? I mean, this whole run from June to August was completely misplaced. 
right? Somehow the market tricked itself into thinking that the Fed was willing to pause, the Fed was willing to back down, um, and all the chairman said was we're going to be data dependent. Well, here we are back right when he said that, and we got a big data point tomorrow. We'll see where we go. All right, let's jump around to what else I have talking about this morning. How about Porsche? Uh, overtaking the parent company Volkswagen, man. Now, this one's interesting, almost Tesla-like when you talk about the num amount of deliveries. Porsche overtakes parent Volkswagen as Europe's most valuable automaker. That number, Porsche was up 3.1%, 90.68 euros. Uh, that's less dollars because of parity now. Uh, giving it a market value of 82.7, uh, excuse me. Okay, they were trading at 90 euros, their stock, which gives it a valuation of $81.5 billion or 82.7 billion euros. So just ahead of Volkswagen. And there's the chart for the spike that they've got. Porsche's current market cap accelerating higher on their IPO. Now, how many cars do they make? Oh, come on. It's in here. I just read it. Here we go. Volkswagen sells 10 million vehicles in a typical year. Porsche sells 300,000. Yeah, 33 times the size of the company, and somehow Volkswagen has them edged. Uh, excuse me, Porsche has them edged, and Volkswagen is doing some great things, man. That stock has been benefiting from their transition to electric. Maybe there's a little arbitrage opportunity there with Porsche getting a little bit ahead of itself, selling 300,000 vehicles. I'm sure they're making more margins than Volkswagen is on their vehicles. Um, but if you asked me which company I'd probably want to buy, I'd probably want Volkswagen versus Porsche, even though never owned a Porsche, but uh, those Porsches can't deny. Stylish vehicles, German sports car maker. All right. What else do we have pulled up here to talk about? Talked about the Fed. Uh, gas prices in Florida. We'll jump around a little bit. So this one, if you're looking to load up on gas, man, do it in the month of October in Florida. So you have a state uh, suspending 25.3 cents per gallon. That's the tax on a gallon of gas in the state of Florida, and it is suspended. Uh, the gas prices, as you get a tax holiday, went into effect. That is for the month of October. So if you plan on stocking up, you, you got a gas tank that you keep in the garage or something like that. You got a generator. Uh, stock up on that gas. Yeah, and the other one, all right, we'll do a little bit of tease because I want to, well, now we're going to talk a little bit when we come back, folks. Just about health. Every 2,000 steps a day could help you uh, keep premature death at bay. It's a stock show. This is a finance show. But that seems like something everybody should learn about. And the numbers, folks, I like numbers. I like science. I like statistics. They don't lie. We'll talk a little bit about those numbers when we come back. You should not go away on that commercial break because you're going to want to hear the numbers. A uh, huge study of people, not rocket science, folks. Movement is healthy. Getting your body to move on a daily basis to some degree healthy for your body shocking data right i know but something we all need to hear sometimes s and is negative by three but we got the nasdaq 100 now in the positive we got the russell in the positive we got crude at 87.78 stay tuned folks we'll be locked, talking a little bit of walking when we come back real briefly you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. You can't keep a good bounce down. Uh, the S&Ps right now, all markets positive as we got quite a climb, man. From where we were at six in the morning, when I got up this morning, you're trading up uh, 33 points right now, approaching 1% pop, almost back to the highest we had pre-market. There's an acceleration for you. That's from the open, folks. 930, we're up about 25 points right now in this S&P. NASDAQ 100, you just popped 100 points, 11,693, right near the highs we got overnight. Dow right now up 30 points. We got the Russell up by 11 points. Look at the acceleration in the Russell. Russell pushing the highs of yesterday's close, 1782. Okay, talking a little bit of health, folks, and I tell you, if you want to be a good trader, you want to be a good investor, get some exercise. I'm not lying. All right, that doesn't even talk about it, but you feel the benefits of feeling good, feeling healthy, having some clarity, okay, sitting in front of your desk, and maybe it's necessary depending on how you're trading during market hours, uh, but you can do many things. You can get a walking treadmill with a standing desk to get a little bit of activity. There are ways now that you can do it no matter what. If it's a priority, you can make it happen, and you read stuff like this, and you're like, man, why am I not spending every day doing at least 10,000 steps a day? We'll start with 2,000. Every 2,000 steps a day could help keep premature death at bay. It rhymes, too. Lovely headline. Uh, 2,000 steps, folks, about one mile is what it is. If you're walking a mile, you're walking about three miles an hour. Maybe that takes you 20 minutes, right? People jog a mile. Maybe they jog it in 10 minutes, 12 minutes, something like that. Uh, but walking it, depending on your speed, 18 minutes, if you're going a little faster than three miles an hour, if you're going four miles an hour, it takes you 15 minutes, okay? But 15 minutes doing four miles an hour, even 20 minutes, OK, think about the time throughout your day. You can find 20 minutes if you need to, folks. Everybody can find it because at a minimum, you could wake up 20 minutes earlier. And I guarantee you, you'd be OK. Guarantee it. And you'd get some time in there for exercise and read the numbers we're talking about here. For every 2000 steps you take each day, your risk of premature death may fall by eight to 11 percent. That's for every 2000 steps. OK, uh, you got two studies here accumulating up to roughly 10,000 steps a day. So that's about four to five miles. That's what it says in here, and I would agree with that number. Uh, I have an Apple Watch. I use Strava, which I started using, which is an app that traps, tracks your movement. Now, Apple has great tracking within theirs. I'm sure Android does as well. But I use an Apple Watch. It ties into the app Strava. That tracks. I used to bike a lot more than I do. Now I just go walking and jogging. I want to get back into biting and biking. It's good for your joints. But we're talking about so check it out. Was linked to a reduction in the occurrence of cardiovascular disease, including heart disease, stroke, and heart failure, 13 types of cancer, and dementia. The studies involved 
almost 79,000 participants. That's the type of study I like, folks, a large sample size, all middle-aged and older, who wore a device on their wrist to measure physical activity and whose health was monitored for a median of seven years. 79,000 people for seven years wearing tracking devices, following it. Uh, they found that the health benefits can also be achieved by taking fewer steps. For instance, walking about 9,800 steps a day was found to lower risk of dementia by about 50%, but dementia risk was cut by 25% for those who walked as few as 3,800, right? So there's still benefit to any level. But the more you do it, the more benefit it is. It makes so much sense, folks, but get out and walk. That's it. That's all you got to do. Okay. Now, if you can get your heart rate going a little bit more and if it's your safe, listen, I'm not a doctor, obviously. Okay. If you haven't done this in a while, be careful getting your heart rate up so much. Okay. But walking at a faster pace or upping the intensity by power walking, for example, was found to have health benefits too, with intensity amplifying the results. Walking at a faster pace was linked to a lower risk for dementia, heart disease, cancer, and early death. I'm a fan of all of those things. You should be too. Beyond the benefit accrued for the number of daily steps. So you increase things a little bit. Folks, we've heard it all. But look at the numbers, man. Find the time in the day if you can. I need to find more time in my day. I'm speaking to myself at the same time, okay? But do you have like 30 minutes a day to go walking? Go do it because you can't deny the benefits, man. We're all in the market, right? We like probabilities. You got one body, folks, and you got one probability, okay? And those numbers don't lie, man. 2,000 steps a day, uh, dropping all of those numbers. So get out there. Just walk. That's it. And if you feel good enough, power walk. Up the ante a little bit. All right, let's get back to the market. s and is climbing up by nine. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. We'll kick it off with Amazon. Basically flat this morning, little volatility yesterday. We'll jump over to the big dog, Apple. Apple right now up by about half a percent. Let's jump over to Google shares. Google trading positive. There's a spike for you, up about nine tenths percent. Microsoft shares up by two tenths percent. We jump over to Twitter, the Twitter saga. Backing off a bit from the price, up to 52.30 on that acceleration yesterday. We're down 1.4% today. Looks like some of the funders of that deal backing out. Uh, they were negotiating potentially for a lower price point. Twitter was not a fan of that. There's still some issues to work out here, folks. And when Elon's involved, you better believe that there are some issues. Uh, but I imagine he does not want to go in front of Discovery, which was supposed to happen today and tomorrow, I believe, if things are going forward. So not a coincidence, the, the timing of him saying, you know what, fine, we'll buy it for $44 billion if I don't have to go under discovery. He's got too much going on with too many different companies. And it sounds like he's got too much going on with his personal life as well at times for his text and so forth to be coming out during discovery, which they may for something like that when you're talking about tens of billions of dollars at stake. We jump over to Tesla. Tesla's been getting punished recently since that news came out Tuesday. There was when they announced that, uh, well, where Elon announced. See how I say they announced? That's the problem with being a Tesla shareholder. They didn't announce anything. Elon announced he was buying Twitter, and Tesla traded from 255 to 235 over a period of time that we've had the market accelerating. Now, Tesla had some big news to start the week off, missing deliveries. So that was bringing this thing lower. But today, you're up by about a percent on Tesla shares. Let's see how it yields. The dollar will jump around right now. Look at that, continuing to drop right now. You're talking about yields. Where are we at? We're approaching 3.8%, just like that. 112 off two full points from where you were Tuesday. Look at that. I mean, we got two full points to the upside and two full points right to the backside, man. You take a look at the daily, lower price is coming at you, man. Lower price, higher yield. The 10-year back above 3.8% right now. The 30-year, yeah, backing off by about nine ticks, giving up most of the gain it had over the last couple of days. A uh, few days, really Monday's action, I guess, on the 30 year, up to 129, back to 126.17. Let's jump over to the dollar index. Oh, look at the dollar continuing to run, man. Pushing 112. We're at 111 overnight. Yeah, you're at 112, just like that. If I was going to get some euros, folks, you're traveling to Europe, I would get some now, but I wouldn't get them all. That's what I would do. Because I suspect that this thing's got lower prices coming at you, even in the near term. The Fed's not done yet, man. Uh, and we're at 3.7%. So I know it seems like the economy's struggling when you see the market volatility that you see. But we're still at 3.7%, folks. And we got inflation at 8%, right? And I and I did my spiel with rent, um, with crude, 
But pay attention, man, because those numbers are not coming back down. The headline number, the crew, the core number, excuse me, not coming back down to where they need to be to get cuts anytime soon. Uh, unless we get like some dramatic drop off, man. If we get, you know, unemployment hit four and a half, five percent, something like that, then yeah, I think they'd be able to explain away rent, possibly lifting the inflation numbers. But I don't see that happening too quickly either. We're going to find out some of it tomorrow, folks. Stay tuned. One more segment. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up about 10 points right now, back above 3,800. I have this on an hourly chart. We're going back to the highs of September 13th. Again, that was the CPI print that was super hot. Markets accelerate lower. We get Fed speak from there. Uh, Fed decision, I should say. Uh, accelerates into 3571. Keep your eye on it, though. 3800, folks, is just about a 382. All we've done is chop around that area, whether you were up there overnight last night. That's also right where you finished Tuesday's action, 3802 right now in the S&Ps and the NASDAQ 100. Pretty similar chart, man. From 13,000, we'll call it, down to about 10,900, and we've backed up right to the 382. You make it through the 382, 12,200 maybe, looking at the next spot that you could see a rise to. I don't know if they see that happening, though, right now, folks, ahead of the jobs number tomorrow. All right, jumping around to what else we have. Talking about energy, talking about the U.K., boy, Europe, the U.K., 
What's going to happen this winter, man? I think we're seeing the first glimpses of it. The UK grid warns of winter power cuts in a tight energy market. Gas demand forecast to rise with shortage of power imports, and the grid sees tighter power system margin this winter. Uh, not surprising stuff, but they warn that some customers face potential power cuts on cold, calm days as the country heads into winter with the smallest margin of power backup supplies in seven years. That is a tough deal going on over there, folks, no matter what. And they are going to be dealing with some issues. And unfortunately, that's probably going to play into uh, cost issues over there that matter right now with inflation and matter for the ability to those central banks to get things under control. And that's why you're seeing so much dollar strength, man. And very difficult to imagine that changing anytime soon for the reasons we've been stating. And that's an hourly chart in the dollar index. And what we do, man, from 107.68 up to 114.77. And just like that, though, we've caught a little bit of a bounce with the dollar pushing 112 right now. Lots of volatility in these markets, folks. S&Ps back to flat. The Dow slightly in the red. NASDAQ 100 slightly in the green. Thanks so much for starting your trading day off with me. We got live programming all day, folks. Basil Chapman with the Tiger Technician's Hours next. Then we get our man Steve Rhodes with the Trader's Edge at 11. Fast Market at 12. You heard Kevin. They'll be talking about Pinterest. They'll be talking a little Peloton. We got our man uh, Larry Pesavento. Live at 1 o'clock, Dave White at 2, Tom O'Brien, my dad, live from 3 till 4. Thanks so much, folks. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock in the morning, and we'll know a lot more then than we do right now. Have a great day, folks. Stay tuned for Basil.